More and more teams have adopted linters and other static analysis tools in their development tool chain. And some of them integrated into the IDE, some others just automated with the CI. Today, we're gonna see what a linter is, what it does, and why it is important for you and your team to use one. Let's dive into it. Hi everybody, welcome back to Code Dave. Today we talk about linters and the linting practice in general. And if you are into those kind of things, consider subscribing because next video will be all about the interesting and incredible GitHub Super Linter. Right, first off, what is a linter? If we look at the Wikipedia page, they say that the linter is a static code analysis tool used to flag programming errors, bugs, stylistic errors, and suspicious constructs. Just a small parenthesis here, if you're not familiar with what static code analysis means, it's a kind of analysis, usually by an automated tools, that you can do against the software without actually executing it. So therefore, most of the time, this is executed against the source code. A linter, being part of the static code analysis toolset, it's normally executed against code or scripting and so on and so forth. Let's now break down the definition we've seen before and it's four categories. And let's start with the programming errors. You may think that it's easy to find programming errors because usually they are shown and identified at compile time. And this is mostly true, but only for compiled languages. If you use languages and frameworks like .NET, C++, Java, Go, Rust, etc., at some point the compiler will let you know that you've made a mistake and where so you can fix it. But let's think for a minute about a non-compile language. Since there are no compilers, there is no compile time errors. And so finding typos, syntax errors, uses of undeclared variables, calls to undefined or deprecated functions, for instance, is pretty hard to do without a tool. This is where a linter can help developers fixing their code faster and avoid bugs before execution. And we can take this further. What if we talk about scripting or even code that is not directly executable. Let's think, for example, about CSS. That is not code, right? Therefore, it's not executable. The only traditional way you have to identify errors in the CSS is looking at the resulting web page and see if everything works correctly. With a CSS linter instead, you can make sure everything is okay before your CSS is loaded into the browser. All right, I hope this makes sense to you so far. Let's move to the next category, which is bugs and performance improvements. This is actually fairly similar to the previous one, with the exception that even for compiled languages, it's very hard for the compiler to find bugs beforehand. Some compilers, like Rosalind for the .NET platform, are advanced enough to be able to identify possible bugs and warn you about them. But in general, this is something that most compilers just don't do. For this reason, having a linter is a good thing. It may help you identify bugs before executing your code because we all want our software not to have bugs when executing, do we? Another important area where linters can be beneficial is the performance improvement area. Now, there are some compilers out there that can take care of performance, but in general, they just don't. Every experienced developer knows not only the importance of having performing software, but many tricks to improve that. The problem is, what about newcomers? And how can you pass this knowledge forward? And even the most senior programmers may, at times, miss one technique or two. So why don't let an automated software do it for you instead? Luckily for us, most linters have some performance recommendation and rules that you can apply to your code. Hope you're still with me. Before we move to the next two categories, hit the like button below if you're enjoying this video or you find it insightful. It will help this video to be recommended to more viewers, therefore they can benefit from it and will really mean a lot to me. All right, let's talk now about stylistic errors. While the word errors is a little bit exaggerated probably to describe this, it's still an area in which linters can be really helpful. Let's expand it a bit and call it code standardization. Standardizing your code is a great way to move the conversation to a more productive level. Having a guideline and running linters against the code base avoids aesthetical changes in your pull requests, like for example, replacing old tab for spaces, indenting variable assignments, or even line breaks after a given number of characters. You'd be surprised about how much time developers and teams spend just about those things. Or probably you won't be surprised because I think we've all seen that throughout our careers. Anyway, maximizing the time for meaningful changes takes your discussions to topics that really matter, like architectural decisions, possible bugs, and security issues. Speaking of which, let's talk about the last categories, the suspicious constructs. 
we can broaden this and call it just security. And I hope you all agree with me that security is a very important part in software engineering. And while there are tools in the static code analysis toolset that are specifically designed and created for taking care of security, linters can help as well in this realm. Again, they can scan the code, which could be compiled languages, script, or even SQL, YAML, or Docker files for what matters, and make sure there are no security vulnerabilities in it. One thing I haven't mentioned, and that actually applies to the four categories we've seen, is that with most of the linters, you have full control on what you want to do in your code analysis. What I mean by that is that most of the linters, especially the most used ones, have a configuration that in fact allow you to pick and choose what rules you want to apply or not to apply to your code. And some of them allow even to create custom rules so you can do exactly what you want with your code. So let's recap. Why are linters important? Well, linting improves readability, removes errors before execution, and even helps with standardization and security. Because of all of this, a good linter makes code easier to understand, improve, maintain, and evolve, gives you visibility on your code base health, and in general, helps you reduce the technical debt. In the end, linters help get you more productive and save time and money. They drive your team to do better and more informed decision while sharing ownership over the quality. Let me know in the comment section below if you have more questions about linters and linter in general and what linters you use. Also stay tuned because as I mentioned before, I will soon have a deep dive video into the GitHub Super Linter. You may also want to watch this video over here to understand the benefits of DevOps. But that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I see you in the next video here at Code Dave.